he wasn't looked at hard. We didn't end an episode thinking it's him, which kind of makes me think that it could possibly be him. Watching Melissa McCarthy fight Meryl Streep was not on my 2024 bingo list, but boy, no. am I satisfied. This very much reminds me of the Demises. Just because you are guilty of one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of murder. Hello and welcome to Road Goes Ever On and On. Today, Mark and I are talking about the hit Hulu series, Only Murders in the Building, Season 4, Episode 7, The Valley of the Dolls, so spoilers are ahead. And if you're enjoying the video, then feel free to give it a like. And if you don't want to miss a single one of our breakdowns, since Silo is coming up next and Severance after that, then just be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss a single one. And with that, let's talk about some theories and questions on this. Okay. Yes? I think that you might have been right. That Dudinoff might be the murder in the building that we are searching for and not Saz. So this gives me hope that Saz is still alive. Okay. Okay. So do you have any thoughts? Like expand on that a little bit more about who it is or, or no? I haven't got anything in stone yet. But okay, okay. I think this expands the potential murderers to characters we've seen from season one on. I was pretty much limiting myself to the fourth season that it had to be a fourth season murderer. But now I believe it's somebody beforehand. And I forget her name, but Bunny's friend. Mm. But like, she doesn't really seem like the type. Other than that, nobody came to my mind off the, the rip for that one. So, but I do it's, think it's a wide range now. Yeah, that's that's Uma. I agree that she hasn't gotten enough screen time for it to feel satisfying that it's her. Yeah. Um, same thing with somebody mentioned Lester at one point in our comments. And the doorman? I don't think that, yeah, the doorman. I don't think he's gotten enough screen time for it to really be compelling that it's him. Do you think it's the Westies? I do or not, somebody from the Westies? I do not think it's the Westies because I, I don't think, think it's them. So at the end of this episode, you know, we still have three more episodes. Yes. This episode pointed at them like it's them. And Hashtag too soon. Right. Hashtag too soon. Yeah. I, I do believe that they may have known that Dudnoff died, but they wanted to keep their rent scheme under wraps and like wanted to keep that going so they didn't get evicted. So I think that's mm -hmm. why they've kept the ploy that Dudnoff's alive. And I think we might hear that I'm, I'm still holding on to the fact that Saz is their friend and Saz is the one that helped like orchestrate that for the Westies. Yeah, I think three episodes left, it is too soon for us to know who the killer is. So I don't think that it can be them. In addition to that, you know, this very much reminds me of the Demises. Just because you are guilty of one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of murder. So, you know, like the, the Demises looked guilty in season one because they were doing another crime, but they weren't murderers. Right, right, okay. Yep, yep, yep. You know, and they, they were highlighted because they, they were doing very shady stuff because they were doing crime, but it wasn't murder. So I, I feel like we've kind of seen this before. Just because you're doing one bad thing doesn't mean you're the murderer. And if anybody should know this, I feel like the, the gang should know this because I can't remember what his first name is, but like Father Demas, Nathan Lane, hated those people after being kind of outed for the other stuff he was doing not related to murder you know so it made right. for some uncomfortable kind of like elevator transactions do we um, think that nathan lane's character is the sniper I again not enough spend uh, time this season but this season well that that brings me to another interesting idea which is like what if so they, they finally brought light to the fact that there's a potentially a bigger thing going on from all the way from season one. I wonder if it's possible that like, do they do they wrap that up this season or do they wrap up whatever's going on this season and still have that mystery hanging over us? And you're like wondering mm. about it for the next season, you know, rather than only three episodes left. We're hit with this, you know, oh, there's a bigger thing going on. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because... I always did wonder when Jan got that note, that was the big thing for me where I was like, oh, who gave Jan that note? And so in my mind, yep. I thought Jan was just playing like a long game herself and was like, oh, to you know make sure nobody looks at me, I put this note there. 
But the fact that they had this, and I don't know if this has always been the plan or like an idea or if it just like, they were like, oh, hey, we never explained this. We never explained this. We can use the dog as another clue to this bigger mystery. So like, I'm wondering how long they've had this planned. And I don't, I I have not a lot of theories of who it could be. I'm also still not 100% tied to the fact that everything that was presented the way that the actors presented it is necessarily correct. One thing that kind of makes me wonder that is I feel like the note that says sick pup, I feel like that is a weird way to describe a poisoned dog. You know, yes, technically it's sick because it was poison, but I think most people, when I think of sick, I think of like, I caught something, you know, if I were to write yeah. a note. Now that that could just be the, the show was trying to make it look ambiguous so that we wouldn't think back to the one poison dog we remember. So I, right. it could just be that, but it, it seems like just because this looks like it lines up perfectly with one thing doesn't necessarily mean that. Once again, it, it feels a little too early for us to have figured everything out. Yeah. And I mean, it does make sense that Saz was onto this because Jan was from season one. They had a relationship. Jan knew about the cold case that was in the thing, which I'm assuming she's talking about Dudinoff. But if it was a cold case, then they wouldn't have known. Like, it doesn't seem like they knew Dudinoff was murdered. So I don't know if that's the cold case she's speaking of. But it does seem like Jan has maybe some knowledge about this. She let Saz in on some of it. Like, Jan got the note, so she told Saz about it. They never figured out who poisoned the dog. So, yeah, I... Do you have any theories of who it might be? I mean, my my top three are Marshall, if it's not necessarily somebody from season one. Okay. I could see him as... He's, he's so eager to be a part of this, to be part of the conversation. He wasn't looked at hard. You know, like we didn't end an episode thinking it's him, which kind of makes me think that it could possibly be him. If it's people from season one and people that we've seen this season a decent amount, then I could possibly see Howard, although I can't imagine him poisoning a dog. That's like the one thing I I really, it's tough for me to get past. Or, and I don't know how or why, but maybe Saz? Hmm. So you think it might be Saz trying to kill them? That's just, that's, that's my, that's not necessarily, I think it's that as much as it is, if I had to put my money down, I would do, you know, take my money and do like 40% of it on Marshall, 30 on Howard, 30 on Saz. If I had to put my, my money on something right now, that's where it would kind of be. I, I don't feel like it's Saz. Howard, I did ponder if it would be Howard, and I could see since he's had such a screen presence, but part of me feels like Howard is like an unofficial member of the gang, you know? Yes. And I, you know, he's in the the credits. I just, I feel like it would really be hard to make Howard the murderer and be satisfying, but he's been there since the beginning. He's been there since the beginning. He's had some qualms in the first season. He was pretty bitter about things. You did point out in the one opening, he had footprints coming out from behind him. So that could be another clue that it is Howard. Although I I now kind of think that um, ever since I've noticed that, I've been paying attention to the opening title sequence. And I noticed that they have, I haven't gone back and watched old ones. Mm -hmm. So I've only seen in like the last three that there is an Easter egg in each of them. So uh, the last episode adaptation, there was a film camera on top of the building. In this episode, the three main characters, yep, were wearing look like the ponytails. Yep. Yep. Or pig tails, if you will. They are pig tails. Interesting. More swine related. I don't think that's, I don't think the, the pig stuff is necessarily a clue. I think it's potentially just, um, how many Something times can they're we having get... fun with? Yeah. Like oh, almost like in Super Troopers when he's like, how many times can you say meow? And he's like, license or registration yes. meow. That's, I, I do feel like, because yeah. even in the last season, the big thing with Ben Glenroy was hmm. fucking pig on the mirror. Right. And yes. So yes. maybe just somebody really likes pigs and they're like, how many pigs can we get in there? Yeah. So I've got a, a question 
Okay. It doesn't quite make sense to me with the Westies, which is why are they getting ham from Portugal if not from Dudenoff? Like, who's sending that? We definitely saw Vince Fish unwrapping a thing of ham that had, like, the Portuguese flag. It still seems like there's unfinished questions that we have over there. And once again, I don't think they're guilty. I still think it's Saz. I think Saz is in hiding right now, trying to figure out this case. Or, you know, maybe she has like a plethora of documents or or something. And so she's sitting down, she's in Portugal, sending him the ham. That's my bet. Or maybe whoever Christmas got. The girlfriend? Yeah, the girlfriend. Yeah, Rudy's girlfriend, Helga. She's the only one we haven't met. Her name has been written... We've heard her voice and we found the connection to to Rudy. I think because we haven't actually seen her, I think it'd be unsatisfying if she was the killer. Yeah. But I I do think that Sass had some contact with her. Otherwise, her name wouldn't be written down. So I think she's going to have some importance and come up. Unless Helga is a character that we've seen from season one, two or three, and disguised her voice over the radio. And Helga is a nickname or code name. Interesting. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's the Westies, though. Interesting, They're not interesting. Evil. Okay, before we transition on to kind of like overall thoughts and some, some of the comedy on this, I want to do, I don't know what this is called, and have you seen those rankings, like the blind, blind rankings? So in this case, I've got six random cameos, and we'll see where you rank them. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Okay, Sting. <sighs> I'm going to put Sting at a four solid four he wasn't in it enough for cameo okay roy wood jr roy wood jr who is Roy? probably seen him from he's you've seen him from the daily show he was in season one episode like one or two who did he play in this a lot i i don't remember a lot of these are like in it for i think everybody i have on here is like max two episodes okay then roy wood jr since i don't remember him i'm gonna put him at a six all right i'm gonna put him at a five i'm gonna put him at a five okay okay melissa mccarthy Melissa McCarthy, not the biggest fan of her because I feel like she plays the same character a lot. However, I thought she was really great in this. I'm going to put her at, uh, we'll put her at a three. We'll put her at a three. Okay. Okay. Uh, Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. Still think it's him. I still think it's him. So (laughs) we'll say Scott Bakula is a two. Okay. Matthew Broderick. Oh, I love Matthew Broderick, but I don't know who the last one is. Do I want to put Matthew Broderick one or six? I'm going to put Matthew Broderick one. Oh, you just, you did the right thing. You would have been very upset at yourself. Amy Schumer. Six. That's why I, ah. that's why I moved the Daily Show guy from six to five, because I thought Amy Schumer was coming, <laughs> and I have to put her six. I, uh, I was, I was really hoping you would uh, clog up those bottom spaces and have to put her higher. Good job. I'm actually really happy with that list. That's a, a a solid list for me. I don't think I would really move any of them except maybe Scott Bakula. I can't remember who I said three was. I don't remember either. But maybe Scott Bakula moved three, bumped Melissa McCarthy up one. Okay, okay. But that's probably it. Other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with those rankings. Good job on that. Okay, so overall thoughts and kind of the, the comedy of this episode. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious watching Melissa McCarthy McCarthy fight Meryl Streep was not on my 2024 bingo list, but boy, no. am I satisfied from that. That was great. And fighting over Martin Short, of all people. Right. I, I really <laughs> loved how... So when I was watching this, like it, it doesn't give you much until the end. It is... This episode doesn't move the plot forward much. It is comedy and it's great comedy. I'm happy with that. I loved it. Yeah. And it was mo- I, like mostly carried by Melissa McCarthy, like her right. Long Island accent, the way she was. I'm, I'm sure all of us have some kind of relative like her that just has a ton of dolls or something like that, that is an empty nester yep. fighting with her husband constantly, who is probably an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, I like how she just justified her fight with Meryl Streep as just, oh, the crystal light got over me, but she was drinking the sweaty <laughs> Betty all day. That's right. <laughs> It's basically straight vodka. It's just straight vodka with a little crystal light on it. And she's yeah. like, oh, the crystal light's what made me do it. 
I, I love the fact that like the not only was this mainly comedy, but it was mainly very silly comedy. You know, it th- this episode to me was just a fun episode. I don't know if you looked up the the film. This is like the that the title is based off of. I looked up the film, but I don't know much about the Valley of the Dolls. Okay, here are the interesting things I saw. So, 1967. A brief description of it says film version of Jacqueline Susan's best selling novel chronicling the rise and fall of three young women in show business. I don't think that really tells you much. I think the next few things are where it gets kind of interesting. The tagline is the nation's most startling and hotly discussed bestseller now on the screens with every shock and sensation intact. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 32% critic score. The critics consensus is trashy, campy, soapy, and melodramatic. Valley of the Dolls may be a dud as a Hollywood expose, but is nonetheless endured as a kitsch classic. And in a lot of comments i did see things about this being like a trashy classic gotcha and i could i could see this episode becoming a trashy classic of this show because at first when i watched the episode i didn't think you're right like i didn't think that i was like is this kind of like a fillery episode where we're just kind of wasting time to pad out the season but like it it was funny like it was a a (laughs) comedic goldmine of just like yes melissa mccarthy talking about charles gaslighting her while she gaslit him like right. <laughs> complaining <laughs> about people thinking she's crazy while she's holding two dolls yeah the <laughs> fact that she, they're trying to hide in a safe house and everybody shows up from the the movie oh yes Every, like, just bit by bit yes it was <laughs> I I just felt it was it was comedy genius. This this season we're celebrating film and I love the fact that it was also celebrating film like this, like all film. I can be a bit of an elitist. I've been, you know, I've been labeled no. that. I've I've said it about myself. No. Um so I wouldn't normally celebrate something like this, but I mean, the the comedy in this show sometimes is just like silly physical comedy, like the fight, you know, like season 1 at the very end when the the season has been brilliant the entire time and all of a sudden Charles is poisoned and is like struggling to walk in the the elevator and it's just straight physical comedy i it's i love it so it's like it's always celebrated different types of comedy i love that it's celebrating different types of of film as well you know and i don't think feel like we get that that often in a comedy i i wouldn't call this a sitcom it's kind of a mystery thrillery it's not mystery really... thriller comedy yeah and, and yeah, i know it's like... not i wouldn't call it a sitcom and i just feel like at, like sitcoms you get comedy but it's very can be very slapsticky but like out of something that's just like trying to tell a good story you don't get a lot of comedy from you know especially 30 minute episode shows yeah and i think that this show does it really well and considering how much silly comedy they were doing you know in the first two thirds if not like three quarters of it it was amazing how quickly it turned from that to like two back-to-back gut punches of Charles and his sister kind of having that moment and then Oliver and Loretta having their kind of moment and then the huge revelation at the end it just was amazing how they were able to do that like at no point did anything feel like a, a bad tonal shift you know like it was like a mismatch even though there were very different parts to this right no I I completely agree and we finally got the conclusion of Oliver Putman's drama that he's been going through this season so it feels like that's wrapped up and we don't need to talk about that anymore so we'll have more time to just really focus on the murder and solving the murder I think that with Melissa McCarthy and Charles or uh, Doreen and Charles seeing a little bit of Charles's history in a way like it kind of explained why like that does seem like their mom was a little crazy and maybe that's why Charles is a little bit of a shut-in and a little weirdo the way he can act. Doreen was a younger child by like 16 years. You can see that she has issues of with her emotions and expressing her emotions and it seems like that because we could see them together, we see a little bit of their history and like why they are like this. And even though Charles was in this episode so little, it fleshed out his character quite a bit. It did. I loved it. I loved it. It's great. And with that, I think our journey has come to an end. Thank you folks so much for joining along. Come back next week as we do Only Murders in the Building, Episode 8. We look forward to seeing you then. Until then, I'm Mark. This is Sterling. Thanks.